Hi there. Today we'll be learning about the standards of measurement for length, mass, and time. You probably have heard someone respond to a question with, how long is a piece of string? The intention is to say that the initial question is vague, because without having a piece of string, how can you know how long a piece of string is? So what did people do before they could go to the local hardware store, buy a tape measurer, and tell you exactly how long a piece of string is? The truth, perhaps amusingly, is that they simply had to have a piece of string. Until quite recently, things were measured in vague terms, like feet, the measure of an average adult's foot, a cubit, two feet, an inch, three barley corns, or an acre, the area of a field that could be plowed in one day. As you'll likely have noticed, an inch in one town may be completely different from an inch in another simply because their barley corn may be a different size. This isn't very useful if you need to build something big, so people used to have to go to the king in an area and reference a measurement against theirs. There would be, for example, a literal yardstick somewhere in London, and everyone would have to go there in order to make copies. But what happens if that yardstick gets lost, perhaps in the Great Fire of London? Big brains have been trying to figure this out for a long time, and have only recently moved to a system of universal units, units that are defined in relation to universal constants. That is, things like the speed of light, which is the same all over the universe. Let's learn about some of these measurements and how we define them. Spatial measurements and the units of measurement are split into three main categories. Length, mass, time. When we talk about lengths, we're referring to the distance, displacement, height, depth, and length of objects. Each of these is essentially the same thing. They're all lengths but we use the different terms based on where we're observing from. A box crate with an open top, for example, has a width, depth, and height. You could use these measurements to figure out how much space or volume there is within the crate. In order to measure different dimensions and qualities of objects, we use different measuring instruments. A meter rule, for example, is a standardized stick with all the subdivisions of a meter, and a tape measurer is a convenient way to measure lengths longer than one meter. For smaller, more awkward lengths, or those that need more precision, like the inside diameter of a wedding ring or gas pipe, you can use a vernier caliper. If you ever want an accurate measurement of your height, you'll likely have noticed that it's difficult to get one with a tape measurer, so doctors use instruments called height gauges to measure the height of irregular objects. To measure time, we used to use the position of the sun, but now we get much more accurate measurements with wristwatches or digital clocks. When we need to measure mass, we can use a set of scales or an instrument called a spring balance. You may have used one of these to measure your luggage at the airport when going on vacation. Because we know the strength of the spring, we can calibrate the change in spring length and match that up with the weight that is hung from it. So we have length, mass, and time, but as we touched upon earlier, how we measure those things can vary dramatically. So scientists have developed a few standardized systems to make sure that we all measure things in the same way. These systems tend to be referred to via acronyms of their main units. The CGS system, for example, uses centimeters, grams, and seconds. The standard index system, MKS, uses meters, kilograms, and seconds. These two are usually known as metric measurements, meaning that they measure in meters. The metric system has been adopted in most engineering and scientific fields around the world because of its simplicity. To go up in orders, you either multiply by 10 or divide by 10. So there are 10 millimeters in a centimeter, 100 centimeters in a meter, and 1,000 meters in a kilometer. The other main system, which only really remains in common use in the USA and Great Britain, is the FPS system, otherwise known as Imperial. It's called this because it was defined and spread by the British Empire in the 1800s. The main units of measurement here are feet, pounds, and seconds. This doesn't often use powers of 10, but instead usually multiples of 3. 
12 inches in a foot, 3 feet in a yard, and for some reason 1,760 yards in a mile. It's important to note that the word length refers to physical lengths, but is also used to refer to a length of time. That's why we use a different unit of measurement to refer to lengths of time. When it comes to lengths, stacking lengths gives you dimensions. A one-dimensional line, for example, is a length between two points. If you introduce a second dimension, you then have length and width. When you add depth, you get a three-dimensional shape like a cube. So, as you can see, multiplying the width of a rectangle by its height gives us its surface area. If you then multiply the surface area by the third length, depth, you get the volume of the cuboid. Let's see these measurements in action with an example. Imagine a cube with a volume of 125 cubic centimeters. The task is to find the length of one side of the cube. Then find the time taken by an ant to walk across one side of the cube if it walks at a constant speed of one centimeter per second. We know that cubes have entirely equal sides, so we can simplify the volume formula from width, height, and length into this, which says that volume equals length cubed. We also know that the volume is 125 cubic centimeters, so we can substitute the volume for that in our equation. If you have a calculator handy, the easiest thing at this point would be to plug in the cube root of 125. Or if you know your squares and cubes, you'd be able to spot that 125 happens to be 5 cubed. So one length of the cube must be 5 centimeters. Learning the squares and cubes of all the numbers from 1 to 10 is a little boring, but it makes tasks like this much faster. So let's now find how long the ant takes to walk a length of the cube. Speed, or velocity, can be expressed as distance covered divided by the time taken. In this case, we know that the distance is 5 centimeters, and we know that the velocity of the ant is 1 centimeter per second. So let's begin by rearranging the formula for what we want to solve, time, then plug in the information we know. If it travels one centimeter per second, then we can simply divide the length traveled by the velocity to find out how long it takes. We see then that the ant takes five seconds to travel along a single side. So now you're an expert on lengths, measurements, and ants. Oh wait, you need biology class for the ants. For extra practice problems on the physics of length, mass, and time, see our other online resources. See you next time.